Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to, to all. I'm so happy that I could make it because I was supposed to be here yesterday with you, but unfortunately couldn't do it. Uh, excellencies, distinguished professors, uh, dear Secretary of State from Honduras, uh, also uh, Assistant uh, Minister and uh, Secretary of State of Science from Serbia, uh, distinguished professors, young scientists, dear colleagues, dear friends. I'm delighted to welcome you all to the closing ceremony of the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. What better venue for this ceremony than CERN, a living testament to the power of basic science to bring countries and peoples together to advance knowledge collectively. UNESCO has historical ties to, to CERN, for it was at UNESCO that the CERN project was initiated almost 70 years ago. In the aftermath of the Second uh, World War, men and women of the arts and sciences realized that scientific cooperation would be vital to rebuild peace and security in Europe. How right they were. Yet the basic science have not always enjoyed the visibility they deserve. This is part uh, partially because decades may separate a scientific breakthrough from the everyday products spawned by this breakthrough, such as smartphones and solar panels. That is why the International Year of Basic Sciences has been so important. It has built awareness of the fundamental role that basic science plays in sustainable development. Countries have come to realize that when they invest in basic sciences, they are investing in their future. Countries have come to realize that investing in basic sciences is the price of autonomy. Investing in basic science, uh, in basic research, is the difference between being dependent of, on foreign technologies and developing one's own. Thanks to the 350 events organized around the world over the past 18 months, there is a weighted awareness of the importance of basic sciences for sustainable development. Now, with the decade of science for sustainable development getting underway next year, we shall be able to build on this newfound awareness to generate the knowledge we need to tackle climate change, preserve our health and that of our planet and eliminate extreme poverty. In other words, the knowledge we need for the future we want. In March next year, UNESCO will publish a comprehensive report documenting and celebrating the diverse array of activities conducted worldwide during the International Year. This journey became on the sec uh, began on the 2nd of December 2021, when the International Year was proclaimed by the United Nations General, General Assembly with the support of Honduras and numerous other countries. UNESCO is honored to have been the lead agency for the year. With our partners, we have held intercontinental events in Europe, Asia, Africa, and Latin America. I particularly wish to thank the governments and scientists of Honduras, Rwanda, Serbia, and Vietnam for their tireless support of the year. I also want to, to warmly uh, uh, thank the members of the uh, steering committee and, and really dear Michelle, your leadership uh, there as the chair, uh, because it's you who build one stage after another to enable scientists to showcase their research findings and exchange their views with one another and with the policy community. Throughout the year, our collective efforts have been channeled towards enhancing participation in science and strengthening scientific education and training while advocating for greater funding of, of basic sciences. Among these pillars, one stands out for its transformative potential, open science. In adopting the UNESCO recommendation on open science two years ago, 193 countries agreed to take the necessary steps to make science more accessible, more transparent, more collaborative, and more connected to society and its pressing needs. I'm delighted that yesterday we launched the UNESCO Global Open Science Outlook here at CERN, the first ever global assessment of the status of open science. The outlook is not just another status report, it is also a roadmap 
for it tells us not only how far we have come, but also how far we still have to travel to make open science universal. That is why the outlook will also serve as a beacon, guiding our efforts to secure a future in which scientific knowledge is a common and public good. In conclusion, thank you for it, uh, your dedication to make the International Year a success. Thank you for your enthusiasm and your belief in the power of science to change the world. I thank you. <laughs>